From people getting lost in the desert to the sole survivor of a terrifying plane crash, we count 15 times people evaded deaths in the harshest circumstances known to man. Number 15. Chris Stewart. This is a story from Farum, hence, with a 12 year old who was racing around in his 1000cc Mini when it hit a barrier at 40 miles per hour. In what is referred to as an internal decapitation, Chris's skull was severed from his spine, and he was given a measly 10% chance of survival, with doctors claiming he should have died instantly. But amazingly, in 2006, they reattached his skull using metal plates and bone grafts, and within a few years, he was off racing again. Number 14. Stephen Callahan. It was in January 1982 that Stephen set sail on his small sailboat from the Canary Islands bound for the Caribbean, but not even one week later, his ship sank in a storm, and he was left adrift on an inflatable rubber raft. For 76 entire days, he drifted with nothing but a shirt, three pounds of food, some gear, and water. Eventually, he washed up on the Bahamas. He then wrote an autobiography of the whole ordeal, so impressive that Ang Lee, the director of Life of Pi, asked Stephen to become a film consultant on living aboard a life raft. Number 13. Bethany Hamilton, an early morning in November 2003 when Bethany went surfing in Hawaii. She was out with her best friend Alana and their family when a tiger shark around 4 meters in length rose out of the water and tore Bethany's left arm clean off the shoulder. Instead of panicking or crying, this 13 year old girl swam back to shore with her one good arm, even warning other swimmers nearby to get out of the water. Pretty much the toughest girl of all time. Number 12. Joe Simpson. If you've ever seen the documentary Touching the Void, then you'll already know this guy's story, but for those who don't, Joe was being lowered down a crevasse because of a broken leg when he disappeared from view, so his friend Simon Yates was forced to cut the rope, sending Joe to what seemed like certain death. Instead, it turned into a three-day fight for survival in a frozen tundra, slowly moving through the snow on a broken leg, half frozen until his return. If you haven't seen the documentary, I highly recommend it, Touching the Void. Very powerful stuff. Number 11. Mark and Phil. Another ice story. This one's set in 1982 on the high slopes of New Zealand's tallest mountain, Arawaki Mount Cook. The two men, Mark Inglis and Phil Duell, built an ice cave to escape the blizzard, waiting for it to pass, but unluckily it kept up for 13 days, and all they had were meager rations with no prospect of warmth. Unfortunately, the circulation was cut off in their legs and they had to be amputated, which is something you should never have to go through at 23 years of age. Crazily enough, they still climb to this day with Inglis becoming the first double amputee to conquer Everest, losing fingers and flesh in the process. Number 10. Julianne Kopke, 1971. 93 passengers aboard Lancer Flight 508 when lightning struck the plane over the Peruvian rainforest and it came crashing down. Julianne was blown out of the plane early and landed two miles down the wreckage in a dense thicket where she only came out with blindness in one eye, a broken collarbone along with cuts and bruises. She walked down the jungle following the water downstream until she found a cabin where she waited for the owner to come back. Then she got back to civilization and continued her studies to become a zoologist. Number 9. Anatoly Bukowski, a formerly Soviet researcher at the Institute for High Energy Physics, working on the largest particle accelerator at the time, the Synchrotron U-70. It was in 1978 that a malfunction forced Bukowski to lean over a piece of equipment and look inside the proton beam chamber, but failed safety mechanisms did not turn off the beam, and it went straight through his skull at a speed faster than light. He claims he saw a flash brighter than a thousand suns, with no pain, but his face swelled up and skin began to peel off. Thankfully, he survived without losing any intelligence, but he does get fatigued easily, and he can't hear out of his left ear, and he does have occasional seizures. Number 8. Alcides Moreno, a window cleaner who, in 2007, fell 47 stories when their cable snapped alongside his brother Edgar, who tragically fell to his death. Alcides, on the other hand, was left in a coma with considerable damage to his body, but soon afterwards he awoke and made a full recovery, even walking despite damage to his spinal cord. One of the doctors, quote, 
If you're a believer in miracles, this would be one. I've seen it all, or at least I think I have, until something like this happens. Number 7. Ricky McGee, April 2006, a man who showed up as a skeletal figure near a cattle station in a remote area of Australia. He claims the last thing he remembered was getting his car stolen and that he was drugged by a hitchhiker. Then he awoke to find dingoes scratching at him. He then lived 71 days off a diet of leeches, frogs, snakes and insects with water from a nearby dam and a makeshift shelter. By the time he showed up again, he had lost over half his body weight, coming in at 48 kilos. Number 6. Aaron Ralston, May 2003, an 800-pound boulder falls on Aaron's arm and traps it inside a canyon wall. If this story sounds familiar, it's because we saw it in the film 127 Hours, in which he spends five days trapped in a Utah canyon with little food or water. He went on to write a book about how he used the boulder to snap his own arm, then cut off the flesh with a pocket knife until he could wander off and get rescued by some hikers passing by. Number 5. Wenceslao Moguel, a man in 1915 captured during the Mexican Revolution, sentenced to death by a firing squad. They filled him with 8 bullets and then one more straight through his head, but he survived, feigning death until the shooters left. He's gone on to be interviewed by Ripley from Ripley's Believe It or Not, the story of the man who survived a barrage of bullets which, sadly, left him a little disfigured. Number 4. Truman Duncan, a railroad switchman who endured a horrifying ordeal to have his body sliced clean in half by a train. It was 2006 when Truman fell off a moving train in Cleburne and it sliced him in two, but he managed to stay conscious, calling both 911 and his family to inform them what had happened. After a three-week coma and 23 surgeries, he came out confined to a wheelchair but very much alive. Surgeons claiming it was an absolute miracle and he should not have survived. Number 3. Tammy Oldman Ashcraft, 1983. Tammy and her boyfriend Richard Sharp were sailing the South Pacific when a Category 4 hurricane blew up 19 days into a 30-day crossing. The ship capsized and Tammy, still in the lower decks, was knocked unconscious. 27 hours later, she awoke to find Richard gone, no safety line or mainmast. Fighting down the desire to give up, she sailed for 40 days en route to what she thought was Hawaii, ending up in Hilo Harbor, in shock, but thankful to be alive. Number 2. Paul Templer, 1990s. Paul was working as a river guide with a tribe of native Zimbabwe when he received a surprise attack from one of Africa's most dangerous animals, the bull hippo. While trying to save a colleague, the hippo swallowed Paul's head and then he got mauled with rips in his foot, a severed arm, broken ribs and holes in his chest cavity. He then endured a 7 hour operation for his recovery and went on leading safari trips and public speaking for charities. Number 1. Moro Prosperi, the 1994 Marathon of the Sands in Morocco. Moro was performing the six-day run when a sandstorm caused him to lose his way. He ended up forgetting which way he was supposed to run, and so he ended up far, far away from the track. Within 36 hours, he'd run out of food and water, so he resorted to drinking urine and eating bats and snakes. He tried to commit suicide by slitting his own wrists, but dehydration caused his blood to thicken, clotting each wound. Nine days later, he was found by some nomads and taken to the Algerian hospital. That is it for this.